एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम वेलकम टू एस चांद अकेडमी एंड आई एम अनमोल भाटिया इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट अ टॉपिक विच इज रिलेटेड टू रिजिड बॉडीज सो द टॉपिक इज काइनोमेटिक्स एंड काइनेटिक्स ऑफ द रिजिड बॉडी If you want to study this topic in detail, refer to the book by S. John Publishing. Link is provided in the description box. So, the first and the foremost thing that comes into the mind is what is the basic difference between kinematics and kinetics. So, as per the definition, this kinematics part is related to a study in which we describe a motion of the particle. without considering the causes causes basically mean here uh, the forces so if we don't consider the forces into uh, consideration but uh, we want to study the motion of that particular particle the overall study is named as kinematics and kinetics is basically the study of motion in which we consider its causes so when we study a particular uh, body uh, and we consider the forces into uh, the consideration into the picture then we name that particular concept as kinetics so let us understand uh, certain basic terms which would be helpful in uh, solving the perspective numericals so the basic terms are displacement velocity and acceleration although these are uh, basic terms and terminologies but uh, it has uh, some relation uh, with the considering the particle motion displacement uh, is the term which is uh, used to denote the shortest length of the path so considering uh, the object which is at point a and the object at point a um, Uh, is required to be moved to the point C. Considering uh, this path, which is following A to B, then B to C, so the distance covered here would be d1 from A to B and uh, d2 from this B to C value. So if I uh, look at the total value of uh, the distance, that would be d1 plus d2, which is the total or the actual length of the path which is being covered by the body. but if the body covers uh, or takes the shortest distance like a to c is being covered in this particular uh, distance which is this distance so the shortest length is d3 so the, the displacement would be d3 here so what is the basic definition of the displacement that would be it is the shortest distance covered by the particle from the reference point so reference point here is this a point coming to uh, another uh, set of definition which is only related to the displacement part so it states that it is the change of position of the particle or the body with respect to a certain fixed reference point it is called it is basically a um, you know it it would be a vector quantity so let's say there is a fixed reference point which is this a point and this a point changes its position with respect to uh, b so b would be that point from which we are measuring the distances so uh, the reference or the the length of the path from a to b is termed as displacement but if we consider this particular uh, length so that would be the actual length of the path covered by the body that would be the distance part so it is a change of position so the body has changed its position from a to b but it is with respect to a certain fixed reference point so there would be a fixed reference point with which the position is to be measured and that particular uh, part is called as the uh, vector quantity because it depends upon the direction with which it is moving next is uh, there are certain terminologies that would be used in terms of this displacement 
uh, perspective first thing is let's say this is a point with which the object has started and if the object moves in this particular direction on the right side it would be considered as a positive displacement value and if the object moves in the opposite direction of this reference point O it moves in this opposite direction that would be considered as a negative value of displacement so here the two uh, particular concepts in which a positive displacement value and a negative displacement value is being described. So if an object moves from a fixed reference point towards the right hand side that is called as a positive displacement otherwise it is called as a negative displacement. Let us for an example consider uh, an example in which uh, it has a fixed point which is O and object is moving from O to A. So this is having a positive value of displacement it is termed as D1 and what happens object comes back from O to A again. So object first initially it moves from O to A and then it comes back from A to O. Then again it uh, goes into this direction which is this uh, B direction. So what happens the distances are measured from this particular uh, reference point let's say for an example uh, I have said that it moves from O to A which indicates that it would be a positive value of displacement then it moves from again it covers this particular distance so distances are to be taken as positive on the right hand side part but when it moves from O to uh, this B direction it would be considered as a negative value of displacement. So in total D1 plus D2 will be 2D1 and uh, minus D2 will be the value of the total distance that is being covered. But if I consider displacement only, so displacement is when the object moves from O to B. So this path is to be uh, striked off and only this particular part is to be considered which is from O to B and that indicates minus D2. So the value of displacement comes out to be minus d2. So this would be helpful in solving a particular set of numericals in which uh, you can see that the distances on the right hand side are to be considered as positive and the distances on the left hand side are to be considered as a negative one. Now there are other set of uh, um, basic terms or terminologies uh, let us say for an example you have the value uh, of velocity or you have been given to calculate the velocity if certain set is being described. So velocity is basically the rate of change of position of the body with respect to time that particular uh, term is called as velocity. So in, in derivative terms velocity is equal to dx over dt and its units are meter per second or kilometer per hour uh, depends on uh, what value of distances or time is mentioned to you. Let us say for an example we have a value of uh, the path which is mentioned to us as 2t square plus t and we need to find out what would be the velocity from this x uh, particular uh, this x path of the particle. So what we need to do we have to uh, just derivate it with respect to time and after derivating it we will get the value of uh, this velocity. So the derivative part comes out to be 2 multiplied by this 2t plus the derivative of t comes out to be 1. So this becomes 4t plus 1 and if in the question it is mentioned that find the initial velocity which is considering time as 0. So in place of t I need to put 0 so velocity comes out to be 1 meter per second and secondly if the velocity is required for uh, let us say time 2 seconds so what you need to do you need to just put in the value of time as 2 seconds so 8 plus 1 is 9 that comes out to be 9 meter per second provided that this x path is mentioned in meters so this unit is in meters so the velocity units would be in meter per second or uh, for the final velocity would be in, uh, also in the meter per second part. But if it is mentioned that it is in kilometers and the time is in hours, so the unit uh, may come out to be kilometer per hour. 
So this is a particular example which is related to calculation of velocity from the path of the particle. One more concept is this acceleration part that would be required um, in solving certain numericals. So acceleration is basically the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So acceleration in uh, junior classes you must have uh, started this as the formula which is V minus U by T or in terms of uh, the derivative it can be represented as this derivative of velocity with respect to time. So I can write acceleration as dv over dt because this v minus u will be the change in velocity and time will be with respect to the short interval or uh, an interval of time. But if uh, we are given with the particle or if we are given with the, the equation of x, so what we can do d by dt remains the same and in place of v we can substitute dx by dt. So it comes out to be d2x by dt square. That means acceleration would be the double derivative of this x or the particle which is being mentioned to us. Let us say for an example we may consider certain case in which x is mentioned to us as 2t cube plus 4t square plus 3t minus 3. This would be an equation of uh, the particle moving or following a particular this particular path. And we are uh, asked to find out what would be the value of acceleration. So in case of this acceleration part you need to go with the formula which is acceleration is equal to d, dv by dt or you can say that it is the double derivative of this particle. So I need to differentiate this equation with respect to t and again I need to differentiate it so as to find out what is the value of acceleration. So how it can be done? So initially I need to find out dx by dt just by differentiating this entire equation which is 2 into 3 which is 6 t square plus 4 into 2 it is 8t plus 3. The basic fundamental of the derivatives and then I need to differentiate it again which is d2x by dt square that comes out to be 6 into 2 which is 12t plus 8. So this would be the case of acceleration but if it is mentioned in the question that uh, this is for a particular uh, period of time so acceleration let us say for uh, time let us say 2 seconds so that acceleration would be in this particular equation you need to substitute time as 2 seconds so 12 into 2 plus 8 so 24 plus 2 plus 8 which will be 32 meter per second square provided the distance is coming in uh, is mentioned in meters. So the distance if mentioned in meters that would be considered as particular case. Let us say for an example we consider another set of in which it is mentioned that acceleration is uh, to be find out and provided we are given with the value of velocity. Velocity is given in terms of time period which is 3t square minus 3. This is some equation of velocity uh, or the velocity equation can be derived from the x part which may be required or may be given in the question. So how can we do this question? In this acceleration is to be determined uh, and that uh, determination would be equal to the derivative of velocity. As per the general definition of acceleration, it would be the derivative of velocity. So we need to derivate it again. So 2t's derivative is 2 and 3 into 2 is 60 minus the constant's derivative is 0. So if acceleration is required when let us say time is 0 or initial acceleration, so what you need to do? You need to put time as 0. So 2 plus 6 into 0 that comes out to be 2 meter per second square. 
So this is the basic uh, concept that uh, would be required to solve the future uh, numericals. So we stop here for a short break. Uh, after coming back from the break, we will learn this concept of uh, kinematics and kinetics more into the details with the help of certain examples. Now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep. S. Chand Academy brings detailed lectures based on AICTE curriculum as per the new education policy 2020. So do not forget to subscribe to the S. Chand Academy and access the wide world of knowledge conveniently sitting at your home. Stay connected and keep watching S. Chand Academy. Happy learning! Welcome back to S. Chand Academy after the break. Before going to the break, we have learnt the concept of kinematics and kinetics in which I have told you that if we consider forces into the picture, the concept is called as kinetics. So we will be learning this concept of kinetics, but the concept of kinetics is particularly linked with the rigid bodies. So we will be learning that concept with the help of certain numerical problems. So let us have a look at those numerical problems. This uh, problem I have taken straight away from the book and this problem states that the equation of the particle which is moving in a straight line is mentioned to us which is S equals to 18t plus 3t square minus 2t cube and it is mentioned that S here indicates the distance, the total distance covered in meters. So it is mentioned that the distance is there in meters at the end of t seconds. So t here indicates the time and s here indicates the distance. And what are we required to find out? Uh, there is a requirement to find out this velocity and acceleration at the start it is mentioned. So what we have to proceed or how we can proceed uh, to this numerical. Firstly if the velocity is required so we need to derivate this s equation with respect to time. So we will get v equals to ds by dt. Additionally, if acceleration is required, so what we need to do, either we can double derivate this equation of s or we can derivate the equation of velocity which may come out from the uh, first case. And it is mentioned at the start, at the start means initial uh, time period. So for the initial time period we need to find out velocity and acceleration maybe by putting the time's value as 0. Then it is required to find out the time when the particle reaches the maximum velocity. So velocity equation is there with us and we need to find out the time when the particle reaches the maximum velocity. So here the concept of maximum minima would come into picture in which uh, after derivating or after finding out this equation of s we need to put that equals to 0 so that the velocity reaches to the maximum value. From there we need to find out the time period and lastly the maximum velocity of the particle is required in the question. So we will proceed this, uh, proceed by solving this numerical. Firstly as I have told you that we are given with this equation of s. So s equation is there with us. So we need to find out what is v. So v is to be calculated as the derivative of this s part. So ds by dt indicates the velocity or dx by dt but here it is s so we need to write ds by dt. So we will be derivating it 18t's derivative will be 18, 3t squares derivative will be 3 into 2 which is 60 minus 2 into t cube it's 2 into 3 which is 6 t square. Uh, you will reduce one power of t as per the general formula of derivatives and then for acceleration you have to go with the double derivative of s. So you have a single derivative of s which is ds by dt and you need to derivate it again so that it becomes the constant's derivative is 0 so this, terms, this term is removed. The derivative of 60 comes out to be 6, 6 into t squares derivative is um, 12t. So this comes out to be 6 minus 12t. So this would be the case of acceleration. Now what is required? Uh, you are uh, required to find out velocity and acceleration at the start. It is mentioned at the start. So at the start 
means that you need to put time period as 0. So time here is to be substituted as 0. So in, in place of this velocity equation which was 18 plus 60 minus 60 square, you need to substitute t as 0. So in place of t you have substituted 0, so you got velocity as 18 meter per second. Now for the acceleration, acceleration was 6 minus 12 t. So in case of this 6 minus 12 into t place you need to put 0. So 6 minus 0 it comes out to be 6 meter per second square. So this answers our first part which indicates that in the start velocity is 18 meter per second and acceleration is 6 meter per second square. So this is the answer to the first part of the numerical. Now the second part says that the time when the particle reaches the maximum velocity. So as I have told you for this maximum velocity part we need to do what? We need to derivate this velocity and put that velocity part equals to 0. This is the general case to find out the maximum minima part of any uh, you know equation. So dv by dt you have to keep this dv by dt part as 0. So dv by dt I have already calculated. So dv by dt's value is coming out to be 6 minus 12 t. So here you need to put this 6 minus 12 t part as 0. So after substituting it equals to 0 you will get that 6 equals to 12 t. So on solving t comes out to be 1 by 2 or 0.5 seconds. So the value of t comes out to be 0.5 seconds. So this answers to the first to the second part the time when the particle reaches to the maximum velocity. So for the maximum velocity what you have done you have calculated this velocity is derivative and you have substituted it equals to 0 after substituting it equals to 0 you are getting the value of time period. Now the last part of the question says that maximum velocity of the particle. So maximum velocity of the particle can be calculated from the velocity equation. So you have this velocity equation which is 18 plus 60 minus 60 square. So you have this equation, time period that you got, the time period that you got was 0.5 seconds. So if we put this value of time period in the equation of velocity, we will get the maximum velocity. Equation of velocity is coming out to be 18 plus 60 minus 60 square and if I put the value of time period as 0.5 seconds I will get the maximum velocity so 6 into 0.5 plus sorry this would be minus so minus 6 into 0.5 square on solving you will get the value of velocity as 19.5 meter per second. So this would be the value of the maximum velocity. This is the case. So on summarizing this question, this question uh, says that the particle was having a particular equation and that equation was in terms of t. And what we are required to find out, we are required to find out velocity and acceleration. Just derivative uh, you have done uh, for the s part and again the second derivative would uh, give you the value of acceleration but that values those values would be in terms of t. It is mentioned that at the start so for the at the start case you have to substitute time as 0. After substituting you will get some value of acceleration and velocities. Now the next part says that when the particle reaches the maximum velocity. So for maximum velocity use you can use the concept of maxima minima which indicates that the derivative of the velocity with respect to time and that it is equals to 0. From that particular equation you have calculated time which came out to be 0.5 seconds and if you substitute the same value in the equation of velocity you will get the maximum velocity part. Now we will look at another uh, uh, question. So the second uh, part or the second problem is like this. In this uh, particular uh, case you are also given the equation of a particle which is which indicates the equation of motion of the particle. Now what is required 
you need to find out the time position velocity and the distance traveled when the acceleration is zero now this is a, a, a tricky uh, part uh, in the question it indicates that the acceleration is zero so what is the tricky part in it uh, in the previous case you were given to find out the initial value of acceleration in which you have to substitute time as zero now in this particular case you have to substitute acceleration as zero and from there you need to find out the value of time so we need to find out that value of time period in which the acceleration is zero so for this particular situation we have to proceed in the similar fashion that we have done before so what is uh, the case you have this equation of motion which indicates x equals to 64 minus 2 t cube minus 12 t square minus 3 t plus 3. So this question says that acceleration is 0 you need to find out time x velocity and the value of s also distance traveled. So initially we need to derivate it so it is we have derivated it dx by dt we need to find out. So velocity equals to dx by dt. So just the derivative 6 into 4 it is 24 t cube minus 6 into uh, 2 into 3 which is 60 square minus 12 into 2 which is 24 t minus 3 into t's derivative is 1 and this is a constant so the derivative of constant is 0. Then we have to find out acceleration also. So for acceleration we have to derivate the velocity. So this part or this equation entire equation is to be derivated again so that acceleration comes into the picture. So 24 into 3 it is 72 t square minus 6 into 2 is 12 t minus 24 into t is 24. Now we have uh, obtained the equation of acceleration. Now in the question it is mentioned that acceleration is 0 that means the body is not accelerating and you need to find out for which particular time period that the body is not accelerating. So here in this case you need to put this value of acceleration as 0. So this 72 t square minus 12 t minus 24 is to be substituted as 0. We can take common value and we obtain a general equation after a reduced equation after removing that common and uh, this is a case of uh, splitting the middle term. So how can we solve this? So we have to multiply the first coefficient and the last one. So it comes out to be 6 into 2 is 12 and then solving it again. So as minus t is obtained so minus 4t and plus 3t after solving we will get these two values of time period. So minus 0.5 is uh, general value that is to be rejected because time period is not in the negative terms. So time period would be in the positive term. So herein we will obtain the value of this time period which comes out to be 0.67. So what have to we have to do with this time period? Uh, we have to find out this position, velocity and displacement and all by substituting this value of time period in the general equation. So after obtaining that value of time period we need to find out the position now. So for position this x is mentioned to us. So the value of uh, time period is 0.67. So in the same equation which is this equation we have to substitute t as 0.67. So in all the places we have substituted t as 0.67. So we obtained minus 3.79 units as the value of this position. Now for finding out the velocity we have to derivate it. So uh, initially we have already derivated it. So the derivative equation was 24 t cube minus 60 square minus 24 t minus 3. So in place of this equation also we have to substitute t as 0.67. So we have substituted t as 0.67. So we obtained v as minus 14.56 units per second. So this is the velocity and this one would be the uh, position equation. Now for distance traveled what you have to do? Uh, this is an important part or uh, this is a, a critical part as far as your examination is concerned. Displacement is also the position and this one is also the position. So are these two quantities similar? So no they are not similar. 
distance is uh, required that means the total distance that the body traveled in this particular region that is to be found out. So, for this what you have to do you have to consider the initial position. So, initial position is when the time period is equals to 0 and the final position is when the time period is 0.67. So, initially you have to substitute time as 0.67 in this particular equation. Additionally, you have to substitute time as 0 in this particular equation. So, both the times or both the values of x are to be determined and then subtracted. The final minus initial value will give you the total distance value and that value comes out to be minus 6.79. So, here you have obtained the value of this distance again. So, this is the basic part. So, on summarizing how this uh, problem was different from the previous one. In the previous problem, you have substituted time period as 0 because the initial uh, set of acceleration and velocity was to be determined. But in this particular case, you are given with the condition then that the acceleration is 0 and you need to find out the value of time period position and what not. So, for this you have determined acceleration and you have substituted that value equals to 0. So, that the value of time period comes into picture. With this, we come to an end of uh, this video in which we have learnt about kinetics of the rigid body and we have learnt this concept with the help of certain numerical problems. Thank you. If you want to study this topic in detail, refer to the book by S. John Publishing. Link is provided in the description box. If you found our video interesting, please like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon. All rights resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.